weeks. Sermon-wise, I have been doing a little bit of series, uh, a series that I've entitled Drawing Near to God, or Drawing Closer to God, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Well, today we're going to try and finish this series up. And as you notice, there's been a little bit of a theme here with the come, 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 let's take, make the right decisions, let's, the Lord is our stronghold, let's not fall off the cliff, so to speak. I want to tell you a story about a man named Philip Yancey. Anybody ever hear that name? Incredible author. Wrote a book. Well, he's written many books, but one of my favorite is What's So Amazing About Grace. If you've never read that, I would encourage all of you to read that. What's So Amazing About Grace. Anyway, Philip Yancey has a pretty incredible story of his own as he writes in one of his volumes. And the story was that his father died when he was only like eight months old or something like that. He never really knew his dad. Um, now he's an accomplished theologian, an accomplished author and all this stuff. But his father died of polio and was completely paralyzed uh, by polio. And he was in, in those days, an iron lung, which was a big iron cylinder that strapped around the neck and went down the whole length of the body. And what this did is, um, uh, because he lost all muscle control through polio, it, it allowed him to breathe. But it was, a, it was a horrible thing. But then he was trapped, if you will, and then his head braced and all that, in bed forever. But they kept him alive. And Philip Yancey talks about how one day, as an adult now, he went home and he and his mother were going through a box of old photos. And there was these two or three little photos that she kind of had off to the side that were sort of crumpled and yellowed and cracked and, and tore up a little bit on the sides. And he said, Mom, why do you keep these old busted up photos like this? You got a thousand photos here. And she explained to him at that time that his father, while he was in that iron lung, uh, only had four months before he would die. So the last four of his months, and remember, he's only 24 years old, newly married and all this. And he had one son that was almost two, and of course, Philip, who was eight months. So he asked his wife to bring pictures. And she put him in his neck brace and squished him into the, the bolts up there because he couldn't move at all, but at least he could see the pictures of the two children. And she put a picture of herself up there as well. So the last four months of his father's life was spent looking at the three people he loved. That disease took his life. And that's why those pictures were sacred to his mother. His mother gave that picture to Philip, which he carries in his wallet to this day. Not because it's a picture of him, but because that was what his father, that's his only connection to his father that he has. And I got to thinking as I read these beautiful verses here in Revelation 22. Behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to render to every man or woman according to what he has decided, what he has done, the decision that he has made. But then he ends it by saying, and the Spirit, God's Spirit, and the Bride, Jesus the Christ, says, come, come. And let the one who hears come. And let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes to take of the water of life without cost, let him come. I wonder if God's got an old crumpled up photo of me in his wallet. I just got to thinking that. I wonder if he's got an old crumpled up photo of of each of us in his wallet because that's what he spent the last two million years looking at the children he loves today we're going to conclude our series of drawing near to God with the simple term come he's coming quickly his reward is with him 
and will render to each one what you have decided. Come. First, I want you to stand up. We're going to sing one final song. Oh.